We're in the studio. It's been a minute since we've been here. We have a place that's about two hours north of here where all the ski hills are. And if uh, if I'm up there, you see me recording videos in my car. If we're here in Waterloo, then I'm, I'm in the studio here. You don't need to know that. I've been finalizing the presentation for Book More Weddings 2021, which is going to be a live stream out tomorrow at 2 p.m. So if you're interested in getting Book More Weddings 2021, which is essentially a full breakdown of everything that I have been doing and everything that I will be doing over 2021 and specifically kind of looking at 2022, um, some of the comments that I've been getting in both the YouTube videos and I post some stuff on Facebook as well, uh, as well as our members only Facebook group, people are a little concerned that 2021 is essentially just going to be exactly like 2020 was in a lot of places, um, that the speed of everything getting back to normal just really didn't pace and that people are still nervous to get married this year. Um, I'm here to tell you all of the good things and why last year, even though there were a lot of really, really terrible things, why it was actually one of my more favorite years as a wedding photographer. So. As a wedding photographer, what I like doing is I like taking the pictures. I like to go out, I like to do the photo part of the day, I like to take all the beautiful images. What I don't like is sitting down at dinner and doing nothing or capturing like scattered speech photos over the course of like five hours. I don't really like that part of the day. What 2020 kind of did was it removed that section. So at least um, I'm speaking from my experience here in Ontario, Canada, which we limited groups, I think, to 50 at some point, and now it's down to 10, I guess, indoors. But essentially what it did was it had all of my couples, all the couples that still wanted to get married this year, if they wanted to get married this year, they really had the full ability to say like, hey, family, we want you, and these specific friends, we would like to invite you to our wedding, everyone else, sorry, but... It's, it's kind of an excuse. It's a good excuse if you didn't want to have the big wedding and spend a lot of money. What I liked as a photographer, I guess this is very selfishly to, to our industry, that I got to go in, I now got to do the getting ready coverage, usually maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, very, very efficient. The ceremony, the photo session, and family photos, and that was it. I was there for the parts of the day that I enjoyed the most. And I got to do that on a lot of random days. So a lot of people that pushed their bigger receptions to next year, which is um, maybe even when you get pushed to 2022 now, what happened was that when they pushed their, their reception or their party date, they didn't mind doing their actual ceremony on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday. Uh, we saw this as things opened up a little bit in September, October, that a lot of the wedding photographers around here were just absolutely flooded with inquiries for just a bunch of strange and unusual dates that we would never really see. Uh, so those Monday, Tuesday, Friday weddings and Saturdays as well became normal for a couple of weeks. And I think I shot pretty close to the same volume that I would usually shoot on a normal year, but pretty much all stacked between that September, October, early part of November timeframe. So everything happened really, really fast uh, for this year. So I'll do an official count maybe if that matters at all, but I'm, I'm gonna say I probably did 25 to 35 weddings just in September and October of this year. And there's actually a micro, if you're a member of the site, there's a micro weddings course as well as an elopements course. Uh, they're two separate individual courses. Elopements, kind of what I, I picture them to be is two people going off in a helicopter somewhere to go and do a thing. Um, maybe not a helicopter, you can just go walk somewhere that's nice or um, a restaurant or whatever. It's a smaller, smaller gathering. A micro wedding is maybe up to 10 people, maybe 20, 30, whatever restrictions are allowed in your place in the world. Um, that's what I would consider to be a micro wedding. So I built two courses based on each of those. If you're a member, you get access to all my courses. So maybe sign up if you're interested. And also you get Book More Weddings 2021, which is coming out tomorrow. And that's really what spawned today's video. So looking at 2021, the positives that I see for wedding photographers, if you are somebody that is looking to get into the industry, one, you're going to have so many opportunities because people are doing a number of weddings on non Saturdays. So they're all through the week. So you get to work all the time if you want, but they're also smaller days, which the positive is that you get to build your portfolio out way faster and way larger than you ever could on a normal year. The negative is obviously that maybe you're not going to be getting that 12 hour pricing that it's now going to be a three or four hour day rather than the 16 hour day where you get there at sunrise and stay until after midnight. But as far as portfolio and as far as investing in the future growth of your business, if you can be photographing a lot of small weddings this year. Um, I guess the other positive is that it, same thing happened 2020 that a lot of the day is now just around the couple and that means that your couple's photo session, one, they seem to be a lot more natural. It's a lot easier for me to get people from that initial like, okay, it's our photo session time. What do we do? Tell us what to do with our hands to just them being normal. There's less stress of the day. People are just like kind of, it's almost, I think, 
the, the situation is so far out of control that they're just kind of like, I'm happy to be here with you and our family and that's all that I really wanted for our wedding day. People seem to be able to get in the headspace of just enjoying that moment a lot more. Maybe that's something that 2020 has kind of taught us to really appreciate the people in your life. And I can see that coming through in the images a lot better. So uh, that is maybe one of the, the big positives. The other big positive is obviously that this year is a portfolio building year like no other. Um, and you will also be collecting deposits from 2022 couples. Um, I feel like a lot of people were very, very hesitant to book if they got engaged over last year. Very, very hesitant to book a, a date this year. Uh, 2022 seems a lot more reasonable. So I think that everything that we kind of predicted for this 2021 being double the year, I think that's going to be 2022. And I think that 2021 is going to be your portfolio building year where you get to invest that time into yourself to really create an amazing portfolio to market into that 2022. Uh, same rules apply, the same things that I kind of talked about, that most established wedding photographers are likely already going to be booked every Saturday, every prime Saturday. So if you are somebody that's looking to fill up those Saturday dates, know that most of the established folks in your local area are probably already booked. So there's going to be a lot more people just almost not necessarily desperately, maybe desperately if they've contacted like four people and they're all booked for their date. But by the time they actually inquire with you, they're going to be a lot faster to book with you. They're going to be increasingly unlikely to ghost you. So when they inquire, you respond with pricing. And um, if you're a member, again, you get the welcome kit so you can make your own beautiful welcome kit to send to them, which seems to help with retention quite a lot um, in, the, in the first couple of emails. But this really is the year to invest in yourself, in your craft. Uh, this also means setting up shoots if you're able to. I guess this all goes with within the legal of wherever you are. Set up as many shoots as you can. Set up shoots with couples. Like everybody's just spent the past year pretty much together with their, their partner. So figure out a way to get those couples out for photos, whether uh, another thing I guess that I've noticed, another huge positive over 2020 is if you are a family photographer, if you're doing really any sort of family work, you probably saw an increase in sales to the tune of something like 300, 400%. Um, if you are marketing and, and kind of seeing that this was like, oh, this is working, I should keep at this. Um, as far as mini sessions go, I feel like most people sold out mini sessions a lot faster and for more money and saw more, more after sales than ever before this year. So know that the focus is coming back to family. So maybe the, maybe another takeaway from this is to, to make sure that if you are interested in also having a family element to your wedding photography company, it might make sense at this point, if it is something you're going to pursue, to start a separate web page for it to separate your wedding work and your family work. They do blend together, like you can do it on the same page if you want, but I feel like if you can show that you specialize in two different things and you have two completely different storefronts for it, I do I do feel like it's a better thing overall. Um, as far as running two Instagrams, I probably wouldn't necessarily do that, but I would have two different websites that you can send people to that when they come to your blog, it's a family specific blog and, and doesn't have have any weddings on it but family photos and sales of those prints afterwards have been I'll actually probably make a, a mini session style course at some point and put it up on the member site because I think it is something that really it, it worked very well years past but it worked exceptionally well this year so that is all for my thoughts on why 2021 is going to be a fantastic year for your wedding photography business if you want to build portfolio in a rapid way this is the year to do it if you want to redesign your portfolio if you're just not happy with um, a your portfolio or b potentially the style of clients that you're attracting if you want to completely redesign everything that your wedding photography business is this is the year that those options are available and you don't have to be the one setting up all the shoots that there is going to be more enough work for you coming in that you're able to actually piece together a whole new portfolio and by September October of this year when 2022 inquiries are starting to come in very very heavily you are going to have a completely different portfolio that's going to attract your ideal client in a new way which means your 2022 is going to be absolutely amazing for your business and for your for your mental health as well um, I think one of the biggest steps that I took in my business was really to focus on who my ideal client was and to make sure that I was booking specifically them every single time. It felt really, really weird in the beginning to be like, oh, you're getting married. Um, so I guess to preface what my ideal client is, there's somebody that's getting married kind of close to here. If they're getting married downtown Toronto, I'm kind of hesitant to take that booking. I don't, it's not mentally, it, it's a lot of stress for me. It's a lot of stress on the day. It's a lot of stress leading up to the day. It's a lot of stress. I guess that's all, but it's like, if I book a downtown Toronto wedding and I know it's going to be 
a busy day or I know that there's gonna be like a marathon or something happening on that day. I very much stress out about that in some way the entire year leading up to that wedding. So I discovered that shooting locally close to home, selecting the venues that I enjoy working at, that I enjoy the staff at as well. I think that's another a weird thing that I just kind of enjoy knowing everyone when I go in there. Um, so I really kind of tuned back and selected which venues I work at specifically. I obviously will take outliers, but for the most part, I'm working kind of at the same venues. Um, and my ideal clients tend to go towards those venues. So maybe that's a little bit of a wedding photography life hack that, that I accidentally figured out was that you're as a photographer if your couple's serious about photography you're probably second second down so they're going to book the venue whatever venue they connect the most with so that's a pretty good litmus test at the beginning that if they connect well with this specific venue there's I would say an 80% chance that they're going to be a, a much more ideal client or at least like that 80% plus ideal client that I'm more than happy to work with. So that's kind of what I discovered and I really decided to double down on that and started turning away weddings in other places. If, if I had enough lead time, if it was a request for a year and a half from now, I would maybe tell them that I was booked and I would hope that a wedding would come in for one of these venues locally. And fortunately for me, that worked really well. That was a bit of a risk in the beginning, but it did turn out really well and I would say my life happiness as a wedding photographer is much much happier now that I only do the things that I enjoy doing um, I think this is reflected in my work and my presence on the day and just how excited I am to be at every single wedding so maybe something to think about we'll get a lot deeper over 2021 about designing your ideal lifestyle lifestyle design I think I don't know who coined it maybe Tim Ferriss somebody just kind of came up with this term lifestyle design and it's all about figuring out what you want your life to be and then figuring out the pieces required to create that ideal life. So I think that's a, a strange way that not a lot of us actually come into the wedding photography industry, but I think does have a lot of value. That's all for today. If you're interested in getting Book More Weddings 2021, it will be live streamed tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So uh, if you're a member, you have access to it. If you're not a member, there's a link in the description below for you to come over and to watch that. It is a full course or like a full day long workshop all baked into two hours total. And then we're gonna do a live Q and A at the end. So maybe keep any questions you have, maybe write them down on a notepad or on your phone or whatever, and keep them for the end. And I will be getting to as many of those questions as I possibly can. Um, and then I might even do, uh, like I'll just kind of screen cap the what's happening in the chat. And I might do a podcast or something extended on any of the questions that I don't get. And include that as a bit of a bonus uh, on the in, the in the member site. So thank you so much for being here. And hopefully this made your, relax your nerves a little bit about 2021. If you are nervous about what this year might entail, know that it is going to be an incredible portfolio building year. So make sure that you're aware of that and you're aware of the opportunity. It's getting sunny here. It's cloudy and icy all day. It's sunny now. I'm going to go out into the world and not do anything because everything is closed, unfortunately. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe. See you uh, tomorrow on the live stream, 2 p.m. Eastern. Sign up, description below, links. That's all. See you from the studio.